Hey everybody, I just finished a new big build with some great new components from Lee Time. So let's take a look at what I put together and we'll plug it in and see how it works. All right, let's go. So let's go top to bottom here. This is not a build video. I'm just gonna show you how I put it together. So this is a furniture dolly from Home Depot. They're about 80 bucks. Uh, I like them because they're upright. And so by being vertical, it takes up less space in my garage. I've just got a piece of plywood that I got here. Home Depot sells a two by two foot piece and then some quarter by 20 bolts. So that's kind of my standard platform. Up top is the Lee Time 60 amp charge controller. I made another video on this, but I'm gonna go ahead and reiterate. If you are just getting going into solar and you don't have any components, buy this. This could be the first and maybe the last MPPT charge controller that you ever buy. Why do I say that? Number one, it's enormous. 60 amps is a huge amount of capacity. Number two, it is variable voltage, meaning as you grow, as your system grows, it can grow with you. It will do 12, 24, 36, or 48 volts. So even though this might be a little expensive, you won't have to be buying more new components every time you upgrade your system. Start with this, and this will probably follow you through to whatever you do. So I can start with 12. When I go to a 24 volt system, I don't have to replace this. Uh, it just will, this would have saved me so much money over the years if I would have started here. Also has Bluetooth in it. We'll check that out a little later so that way you can see what your system is doing. Great price, I got some links down below, but really start here and you won't have to keep upgrading. Down below we have lead time, a 2000 watt inverter. This is the 12 volt version. Now there's something very specific about this that I really like that you don't really think about until you start to do a couple of builds. Check this out. If you look here at the back where the power terminals come in, the wires stick out. The, there's actually a, a, a bar that sticks out and then the M8 bolts go perpendicular. And so the ring terminals go in. So that makes the wires come out and loop down. I think that that's a cleaner look, and I think that's a cleaner build, and let me explain. This is my best tech, 500 watt pure sign. I've had this for a couple of years. Really like this, really cheap, really small. But if you look, the terminals go flat onto the back. And so when you mount it like this, or you know, in different kind of orientations, there is an, a greater than zero probability that you may short the terminals. See how that lays? That's really close. That's why I always, always insulate my ring terminals. So if you've got downward pressure on it like this, like you're putting this in an ammo can, that's, I'm not gonna call it likely, but not impossible. Whereas with the wire terminal sticking straight out, you know, there's less chance of gravity kind of making them mash together. They also alternate. You've got one terminal goes down and one terminal goes up, and then these nice plastic insulators that slide over the top. It's something you really don't think about until you build a couple of these things, and then you look at like how everything's kind of oriented. Um, so interesting little tidbit there. The lead time also doesn't come with a remote power switch. Uh, my Gandels all do. I've never once used it since I'm not in an RV. It serves kind of no purpose for me, so whatever. Um, I will appreciate that the lead time came with a very large power cord. This is four 10 gauges or four eight gauges all bundled together, which is like the equivalent of a two gauge. It says it's rated to 150 amps. So I would actually go a little bit bigger than that if I was gonna be routinely pulling 2000 watts or more. But I appreciate that they sent a, a large gauge wire that I'm not afraid to pull 1000 watts or 1500 watts out of. If you look in my previous videos, um, I 
had a four gauge get warm under 800 watts. So I appreciate something decent. And then as we move down here, this is my absolute favorite battery. This is the watt cycle 12 volt 300 amp hour mini. And this has got so much capacity in such an itty bitty little package. I will note right here, because I know someone's gonna make the comment, I have no fuses in this system. I really should. Um, I've got some really neat ones that go online with the battery terminals. Yes, I concur that having bat uh, fuses would be a good idea. I just don't routinely do it. But yeah, you probably should, okay? So I've got an eight gauge wire coming from the charge controller down and all zip tied onto my ring terminals down here below. So solar coming in from the charge controller, going down to the battery, and then coming up to the inverter. This is a very simple, pretty clean build. Uh, you know, I've got room for expansion here. I can drop another 300 amp hour battery right next to this and get me 7.2 kilowatt hours of capacity for another 450 bucks. So, you know, this is light and easy to move around, but I've got a lot of really beefy capacity here. So let's plug in a panel and see how it works. This is an HQST 200 watt panel I've had for a couple of years with my own little uh, invention on the back. So most people don't realize that solar panels have to be angled for best output. So I just took a little piece of wood and a hinge and some rope down at the bottom. And now I can angle this like a painter's easel. I've got my MC4 connectors. There's an extension. Just triple check polarity. And let's take it back inside. Okay, we're inside. Here's the other half of my MC4s. The solar panel light is on and PPT is on. The battery is actually already charged. But I'm getting 10 amps, 9 amps. out of that panel and it's a 12 volt panel uh, at about 200 watts and of course i'm getting some cloud cover so we're getting some charge coming in so uh, let's uh, pull out a load and see how the inverter does and the biggest most ridiculous load is actually the most simple this is a 20 dollars space heater that i know draws more than a thousand watts so the inverter actually has a hard power switch on the bot on the side which I like. Uh, 700 watts. Let's take a look. Twelve hundred and climbing. And this is the point where my thousand watt inverter would have shut off long ago. I have to put it on low. There's no way that it uh, would take thirteen hundred. Solar panel still working. Sun's starting to come out a little bit. So as you can see, this is a pretty straightforward build, but it's got really, really big capacity. I got 3,800 watt hours on this thing um, for not a whole lot of money. I've got a great big charge controller. I've got a big inverter that should be able to throw anything I can throw at it. I've got room on my cart for expansion so I can easily drop another battery on here. So uh, good size power wires, you know, this is a, this is a good solid build. 
It's just not real hard. So big thanks to lead time for uh, some, supplying some components. But man, if you think about what you're getting uh, capacity wise and what you can get in the future out of that charge controller and out of those inverters, this is a good solid build. So uh, thanks everyone. Check out the links below if you're interested in any of these parts and we'll see you on the next one.